What's going on everyone? Vince the Longini here, a 2022 User Advisory Group member for Echo Means Business. Battery lawn equipment is making an impact on the industry and more professionals are making the switch from gas to battery. And many equipment companies are dedicated to manufacturing battery powered equipment to meet the rising demand. I had the opportunity to visit Echo headquarters and attended a great presentation by Jason Wilk a product manager for Echo. I'd like to share some battery fundamentals I learned from that presentation with you in an effort to help you when deciding on a platform for your business. You see, it all starts with this cell here. This is an 18650 lithium ion cell, and this cell is what makes up the battery packs used in today's hand tools, electric cars, and now lawn equipment. Smaller battery packs like this that are used to power your drill only have five of these cells. Whereas others that are used to power your lawn equipment, say like this one right here, use a total of 14 cells. And how they're configured determine things like voltage, capacity, and we'll come back to that in a moment. But first, I wanna clear up a common misconception and the main reason why I'm creating this video, and that misconception is that higher voltage produces more power. And that's simply not true. Voltage is just one variable in the equation that calculates power. Just because you have an 80 volt system doesn't mean it has more power than a 56 volt system. And a 56 volt system may have the same power as an 18 volt system, depending upon what kind of motors and the technology that go into it. Power is equivalent to the voltage times the current minus the effects of the motor efficiency and the total load. And it's the motor efficiency that really drives the equation. So let's talk about motors and what that voltage is driving. There are essentially two types of motors. We have brushed and brushless. A brushed motor is a very simple design, but is not very efficient due to the friction and resistance you get from the brushes. It also requires more maintenance because the brushes wear over time, therefore would require more voltage to drive that kind of motor. A brushless motor is a bit more complex in design, but is more efficient in that it requires less voltage to operate and is virtually maintenance free. Other things to consider with motor design would be the use of inner or outer rotors, the winding material and the magnet type, all of these factors weigh into the ultimate efficiency of the motor and determine the true power you get at the end of say a trimmer head or a blower or a chainsaw. Now, let's go back to the discussion about voltage and capacity. The best way to explain the two and electricity in general is to use the water tank analogy where the amount of water in the tank is the total charge expressed in amp hours, the pressure at the outlet is the voltage, and the flow at the outlet is the current in terms of amps. The battery cells can be configured depending on how you connect them together to change things like the voltage and capacity. So when you take battery cells and connect them in series, you are actually doubling the voltage. And when you take those battery cells and connect them parallel, you are doubling the capacity. Each 18650 cell has a maximum voltage of 4.2 volts and a minimum cutoff voltage of three volts. And that average nominal voltage would be about 3.6 volts. So manufacturers rate their voltages differently based on this variable range between 3.6 and 4.2 volts. For example, the Echo 56 volt E-Force battery I have here is basically using four volts per cell times that by the 14 cells in series and you have this 56 volt battery. A better example would be the DeWalt 20 volt batteries and the Milwaukee 18 volt batteries. Each have five cells, but DeWalt is using four volts per cell and Milwaukee is using 3.6 volts per cell. Both are the same battery, it's just how they decide to market it. You might wonder then how manufacturers choose a voltage rating for their equipment. And this is definitely a serious challenge from both a marketing standpoint and technical standpoint. On the technical side, there's a balance manufacturers are challenged with when it comes to configuring these cells in a way that not only meets the demand of the motor and the load, but is also lightweight and easy to handle in the case of handheld equipment, gives you good runtime and charges quickly. And on the marketing side, I mean, come on, doesn't 100 volts sound better than 18? But we busted that myth already. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and don't forget to check out the other content on Echo Means Business. Thank you for watching.